What's going on, Dodgers Nation? Welcome to the Dodgers Nation post game show. My name is Doug McCain. You can follow me on X and Instagram at DMAC underscore LA. Thanks for rocking with us after the Dodgers. They get the dub over the Washington Nationals by a final score of six to two. They get a much needed bounce back win. They improved it 12 and eight on the season. The big story tonight Mookie Betts, who was outstanding, his third career five hit game. He goes five for five. Andy Pajes, he gets a single on the first pitch you ever saw in the show he goes one for four had a couple of strikeouts we're talking about his MLB debut Kyle Hurt he was back in the show he went two innings a lot of people over on the X and he should have gone longer Ryan Yarbrough he was the bulk guy he goes five innings gave up two hits two run runs had three strikeouts no walks but the Dodgers they get the win 13 hits six runs six runs on 13 hits the Nationals two runs on six hits but yeah a much needed bounce back win for this Dodgers Dodgers team had a little issue with the YouTube feed, but I believe we have that fixed. So just let me know down below in the comment section if you're watching us over on YouTube. The number one Dodgers post game show on YouTube, and it's all thanks to you guys. Now, quick reminder: if you want to be eligible for eligible, if you want to be eligible for all of our giveaways, be sure to subscribe to the Dodgers Nation YouTube channel. Hit that subscribe button. Hit that notification bell. Hit the like button. Also, comment done down below. We're getting close to 90,000 subscribers. Once we get there. We will be giving away a brand new Dodgers Mookie Betts jersey. So definitely be sure to be subscribed. So we're doing tons of giveaways the entire year. But let's dive in the comments section. You guys know how we get down here. First thing I want to see, where are you represented from Dodgers Nation from tonight? What city are you in? Also, who is your player of the game? Has to be Mookie Betts, right? But let's go. AJ Alexander Mookie is good at baseball. We got a 999 super chat. I'm going to hit you with one of these. That was me on X that told you about the feed. I can't super chat on X. Thank you so much, Lorenzo. I really appreciate you. That means a lot, man. Helps the channel. Definitely use it to really help us grow. And uh, it's awesome. YouTube working fine for Robbie Pearson. The Blue Mamba. I like that. Daniel Smith. That's a fire take. It's a fire, fire take from Daniel take. Smith. The Blue Mamba. The new nickname for Mookie Betts. The Mookie Mentality. We've got Nando. Nando. If I had no arms and was blind, I could get more hits than Chris Taylor. Wow, you are bringing it. I mean, the average is down to 29. We had someone say the other day how, I mean, it's, you guys are just very crazy about your takes on Chris Taylor. i got to give you one of these, though. Yeah, anytime I see a burn, anytime you see a rose, that's what you'll see. But, uh, Nando, welcome to the chat. we got Noise by Noel. Doug, who has the most aura on the Dodgers right now, rate your top three. I would say the aura, man, I mean, you got to start right at the top with Shohei Otani behind him. I think you have to really go Mookie Betts. And today, this is probably a bold pick because there's players on this team that have accomplished more than this guy. There are players on this team that are multi-time All-Stars, that are future Hall of Famers, that have done so much more. But just being around Yoshinobu Yamamoto, this guy has the swagger to him. He's got the it factor. I think that the confidence that he displays is just so off the charts. He oozes the confidence. He came over and he talked to the Japanese media because he had a famous Japanese piano player in attendance and the smile the vibes he's got he's got the chanel bags the louis bags he's got the hair he just looks like he's a pop star but uh yeah i gotta be yoshinobu yamamoto those are my top three right now of course aura is like the new him right he's him he's got the aura so feeling that dodgers everything with all that we are still first in the division that's from dodgers everything over youtube yeah i think it's really important to acknowledge that and recognize that there's a long season and the dodgers haven't gone close they haven't came close to playing their best baseball they are still dealing with some injuries in key positions there's still a team that's right around 95 to 99 wins depending on the day as far as the projections go so they're going to go on a run you're going to see your 
Dodgers team win 20 of 21 games. I mean, you'll see them go crazy. I don't know if it'll be that extreme, but they're going to go on a, a, a run where they're winning 7 to 8 of every 10, 11 games, and you're really stacking up a really, really nice record. But let's dive right into this one with the top story. The top story has to be Andy Pajes making his debut, very first at bat, very first pitch, and he singles to right. Check out Andy Pajes' little inside out job, singles to right field, second inning, and you have to feel great for him. In his very first at bat, you just see this guy does not look nervous. If you told me, if you told me that Andy Pajes was in his third or fourth year in the show, I would believe you based on his demeanor. I was in the dugout before the game. He was talking to reporters, and Pajes said that he got the call around 2 a.m., and he called his family and his family was crying and they were going crazy and he told everyone just to relax everyone just to calm down right and i think that is kind of the mindset he has when he's playing baseball that he's very level-headed and he can handle this he can handle not only making his big league debut but being a guy that can go out there and perform on a team that has this much pressure that has these expectations i think andy Paez, he's a special player he's a special player and on the night he had the one hit, goes one for four, goes one for four on the night, had two strikeouts, kind of swung underneath a fastball up and in. And then the other at bat, the line out, I mean, the exit velocity there was high. I mean, it was over 100 miles per hour. It was a hard hit ball. So I love the approach. I love the swing. I love the hard contact. I love the versatility in the outfield, the athleticism, being able to play right. This is someone who has a 70 grade arm, right? 70 out of 80 and 60 grade power. You just don't find that growing on trees. So, hey, they got to turn the pajes on this outfield picture and they have to say, you know what, we're going to give this guy the runway. And Dave said before the game that he's going to get some runway. He's not going to be strictly platooned. He's going to get the at-bats he needs while Jason Hayward is out. And if he makes the most of those at-bats, I think the best thing for Andy Pajes right now is just to make sure you make it a difficult decision. That has to be the goal. Go out there, compete, do your best, perform at the best of your ability, but make it hard on them to deny you, to send you back down. Because if he produces, hits the ball hard, and he gives some pop and some juice to the bottom of that lineup, I think you have to run with Pajes and see if he could be that guy. We've got Chief. Nobody on the face of planet could give Chris Taylor the green light on 3-0. We'll talk some Chris Taylor. Trust me, I have some thoughts on CT3. Mosey Dodgers for life from Meridian, Idaho, by the way, of Carson, California. So you're repping out there. Really appreciate it. Get DMAC on Sports Night LA broadcast. What up, Tyler? Always rocking with us, man. You know, I appreciate it. That's a fire take over there on Facebook. I don't know why Mookie and Shohei can't get hot together. Moonlight. Yeah, they have... Look, we'll talk about Shohei, too. And the thing about Shohei, had a couple singles tonight. He's now 1 for 19 with runners in scoring position. But you saw the ground out. That was also the hardest hit of the game. The ground out he had was the hardest hit of the game when he had an opportunity with runners in scoring position. It was 107.7 miles per hour off the bat there in the second inning and had a 360 expected batting average. So he's hitting the ball hard on some of those opportunities to run in scoring position. I think it's, look, he's going to go up there and try to do damage no matter what. But yeah, is he going to bring a little bit of a different approach in some of those situations, maybe you start to see that. Remember, this is someone who played in Anaheim, right? They couldn't hit sand if they fell off a camel there at the bottom of the lineup for so many years. He's probably looking at it first, looking at it second, be like, why are my teammates on those bags, on those on those pizza boxes out there? What are they doing out there? I'm not used to this. So he's someone who, when it comes to opportunities of runners in the scoring position with men on base, he was below league average for so many years. Maybe that's a tiny little factor. I don't think it's that big of a factor at all, but I think it may be just a little bit of a factor in that one. We got uh, Dunn. We got West LA, your mama. We got AJ Alexander, CT0. Oh, this is Cole from AJ Alexander. We got CT.030. Dude has a .03. 
3.30 batting average. Yikes. Is CT3 long for this team? That's from Steve on Facebook. We got done. We got done. We got uh, uh, noise by Noel again, hey, by the way. How, noise by Noel. Always bringing that noise. Uh, thank you for answering my question. You have the most aura of anybody I've ever seen. Wow. Man, look at my aura. My ex aura. I'm in the 100 percentile according to noise by Noel. Let's get it. Yo, Doug. What up, Deep Fried Beans? We got Chief Barnes. Might get one of the if he hits from <laughs> Chief says Barnes might get one out if he hits from the ladies' tees or second base. Hey, you guys, let's we got to put to bed the Austin Barnes slander for a couple of of days. We got Pajes, a big dude. Pajes looking fierce. We got uh, hey D Mac. Always a good day when there are two streams. That's from Mitchell Hopkins. One ninety nine super chat from Danny Park. You know you get one of these. When Miggy Vargas being promoted, keep crushing it. Hey, look, I mean, Miguel Vargas, I'm sure they had a little bit of a decision to make as far as Vargas versus Pajes. They went with Pajes, the guy who's the hottest hitter at the minor league level. They look smart tonight. He gets a hit in his first at bat. Lorenzo Gattis says, if your average could also be your teammate's age, it's time for some changes. <laughs> you guys are bringing it on the CT3 stuff. Uh, Chief Taylor is only hitting 29 points higher than any of the hot dog vendors. Yeah, I mean, that is, look, when you put it that way, when you put it that way, it definitely is uh, is a little concerning. It's definitely a little concerning when you consider the slump he's in. I mean, I'm getting visions of a over 54 Chris Davis slump that we saw a few years back. I mean, will it get that bad? Will they let it get that bad? That's the big question. I mean, he is someone who has a, on a four-year, $60 million contract, and he has one more hit than everyone in the chat. He has one more hit than myself. He went into this game going one for 33 and that slump is just continuing to get worse but yeah let's start with let's start right at the top here and then we'll really dive into into this game we got chris taylor we got hey dougie fresh you need to have a talk with hog slop talking trash on will smith i'm not mad about will smith by the way someone photoshopped me saying while i was in the dugout doing an interview and they had my name on it look guys will smith he's elite He's an all-star. If this is probably a Padres fan, by the way, how many Padres fans have you met outside of San Diego in the last decade, right? Okay, like they're acting like they're relevant. They can they're making t-shirts out of that. That is just an absolute t-shirts out of that little statement. Come on now. Act like you've been there. Oh, wait, they haven't. Nando 390, Boomer Assassin, my wife strikes out Chris Taylor. We gotta finish him for that. D-Mac, did you think of slow i'm still working on your name for my slow pitch softball so i got some cooked up for you though maybe i'll tell you guys i'll tell you them on tomorrow's show chris taylor and jesse mendoza we got uh, tiana don't worry about showtime we need to worry about chris taylor okay so let's dive into this one and when it comes to chris taylor look i mean in the grand scheme of things i don't believe the dodgers are gonna let him go one for 54 one for 60 at some point he's either going to be phantom i would and when that happens and he's phantom IL'd, then he's going to be sent down to Arizona probably, and they'll try to rework his swing. They'll try to fix his mechanics. I saw Chris Taylor on the field before the game, and he's getting after it. I mean, he's got the iPad on the stand. He's looking at every single angle. He's putting in what I love you back, Jimmy. Um, he's putting in all of the work that you hope a big leaguer would put in. Unfortunately, He's just not seeing the results. He's not seeing the results, and he's just not getting anything going. He's not getting anything really positive. I mean, you know it's bad. You know it's bad for you when you get on base. You're able to get on base, and then what happens? You get thrown out. I mean, that is – I mean, you saw in the bottom – so bottom of the second inning, he's up there, six pitch of that bat, Goes down swing, change up, low and away. And then later in the game, he's he draws a walk. He's up 3-0 in the count. And then on the sixth pitch, a 3-2 count, he draws a walk, takes a slider down and in. And you're saying, okay, maybe that's just a little something, a little positivity for CT3. Then what happens? He gets picked off. He gets picked off. And that's it. And you saw the frustration. Maybe you just forgot kind of what it was like to be on base. Okay, maybe that was the case with that one. But yeah, it's unfortunate. It's not. It it doesn't. It just does not. It, it, as as far as like the strikes we've seen, he's been a streaky player. But it's getting to a point where it's it's a tough watch. It's it's difficult 
to watch him in these situations just continuously not being able to perform. And you see him pressing. You can see that he's frustrated and he wants to go out there and perform better. But unfortunately, it's just not happening for him. And that's just the case right now. But we really want to start with Kyle Hurt. So Kyle Hurt. He gets the start. He goes out there. Dave Roberts said he was going to have a pitch count. And he was going to throw around 40 to 45 pitches. And for Kyle Hurt, he goes out there. And he didn't have his best command early on. He was somehow able to give up those hits. And he only threw 24 pitches. He threw 24 pitches. He gave up consecutive back-to-back hits to open the game. But guess what? No runs. I mean, look at the top of the first there. Gives up the single to Abrams on a changeup. Really not a terrible pitch, but nice piece of hitting. And then Winker, he doubles to right. Then Thomas, he singled to right. Gallo, he fouled out. And then Thomas, he stole second, but then Garcia, he lined out to right. So a little bit of a shaky first inning, but then he comes back there in the second inning, strikes out. He comes out the second inning, gets Senzel to ground out, gets Rosario to ground out, gets Milas to fly to left. So really not a bad job by Kyle Hurt in this one, but it wasn't really about the pitches. It was more so about the stress. I mean, he was laboring there in the first inning, did only go 24 pitches. I think easily he could have came out there and pitched another inning, but it was pretty clear to me that they want to limit his innings and not try to overuse him early on this season. Remember, this is someone they think they can work in the zone. They can get swing and miss. You saw his debut, the kind of hitters he can get out, Tatis, Machado, and Soto. They think that he can be a weapon for this team, so they weren't going to push him. But let me know down below in the comment section. Do you think that that Hurt should have gone another inning? Would you like to see him go another inning? We got uh, Hello Kitty couldn't even help CT.03. He's done. Maddie Man Dodge. Did the players give you a hard time for looking like Will Smith, Doug? Uh, we talked about a couple of different times. I mean, Will Smith and I. But uh, yeah, I know it's uh, these players are busy, man. They're, they're in and out and going through the the clubhouse so yeah it's uh it's it's good times but uh, we got uh flying in for the game tomorrow sacramento representing we got sack town in the house chief i can watch taylor more than i can listen to jessica mendoza not a fan of mendoza i see the experiment is over dave roberts love house will smith after the game comes here and makes us think his name is d mac okay that's a fire take that's a fire take let's once and for all we got to do the show at the same time he's you know we'll do a i'll i'll add a co-host and it'll be will smith we'll prove it to you guys but hey until there's that picture of us in the same room at the same time no comment but yeah kyle hurt we got uh dude we uh, dude i'll be all over you yeah i mean I, that's a funny uh experience with players I'll tell you that much uh hector x dmac needs to take taylor to a dodger bar for a few drinks to get him out of his slump hector x Pajes, True Blue, Oral and Joe are the best. I agree. A 9.99 super chat from Tiana. Got to give you one of these. You win. Thank you, D Mac. I love, love from Northridge. I appreciate you, Tiana, rocking with us here. 10:26 at night. You guys are. You go. I love it. You guys watch a three-plus hour game, then rock with us on the post game because you guys are what Dodger baseball is all about. You live and breathe your boys in blue, and yeah, it's my favorite thing. But AJ Alexander, Will Smith in the studio with D Mac would be epic. LOL. Yeah. I've interviewed him a couple times and talking about the red carpet, blue carpet a couple times. And yeah, he's a fun guy. I mean, honestly, I mean, he, I know people think he has a dry personality, but he, you know, he gets loose. I mean, he's uh, it has a little bit more of a personality to him. I mean, look at him on the blue carpet. Uh, hopefully I'll talk to him at the gala on May 2nd. DMAC is working on every with himself. Okay. Good time. So get the knack. My Sharona. That's from Mr. C. Bow. I'll give you a fire tag for that one. Okay. So, Next up, we talked about Andy Pajes. By the way, you guys know I'm not a big victory lap guy, right? I'm not going to sit here and tell you I told you so. That's not my thing. But Andy Pajes, he ends up hitting a single to right in his first at bat. And if you saw Dodgers dugout live today in the afternoon, this is what I said. I just got a hot shot single. I got a hot shot single finding grass, finding grass. I mean, let's go to a single to right. He's going to get a hit tonight for sure, though. Noel, prediction. Andy Paz first at bat. So there you go. Single to right. You guys want the lottery numbers? I got you. I got you. We got uh, Will Smith and D-Mac do a shoey together. So 
the Pajes situation, I think it's pretty simple at this point. We talked about it earlier today. The DFA was going to be Tramel, Taylor Tramel, and that was ultimately the move. And I think that this Dodgers team, with the way the roster is constructed, if he produces, if he proves that he can handle big league pitching, I think the best thing for him is to, if he starts off hot, let him get as hot as possible just so they can adjust to him and then he can slump a little bit and see how he can adjust to a slump, right? Versus if he's slumping at the beginning, then okay, maybe you have the conversation. Jason Hayward gets healthy. You send Pajes down. You get him more at-bats at the AAA level. You feel good about the fact that he's gone through the process, played at Dodgers Stadium, got a single in his first at-bat, then you kind of work on that momentum and you're feeling good about that but either way i think that this first part of the season this team uh, they've already proven like it's not about winning 110 120 games 106 104 games it's not about that for this team it's putting together the best roster that can win the world series and if you think there's a chance that pajes can be a part of that puzzle then this is the perfect time of the year to evaluate, to assess. You have the talent up and down the lineup to score runs. It's really about the pitching right now. But I would love for Pajes to earn it, to earn the role. And look, center field, you saw him starting in center today. I mean, you can see a platoon situation with James Altman. You could see him in right and then Teoscar go to left. And then Kike Hernandez, give him credit. Kike, he left the yard today. He had his first home run of the season. So that was good for Kike, and I, he definitely needed that. He definitely needed a, little, a home run to really feel good about himself. And you could see there was a lot of frustration. Bottom of the fifth inning, he homers on a 1-0 pitch, 431 feet, got all of it. So he's feeling good about the fact that he gets a home run tonight, but really, you got to give a ton of credit to Mookie Betts. Mookie Betts is carrying this team. Mookie Betts might have won the MVP in April, and it all started in the bottom of the first inning. Bottom of the first inning, Mookie, one two count. He singles to right. Otani, next batter, 0 2 pitch. He gets the bat out there. He puts the bat head on the ball and it just pokes it right into left field. That sets the Dodgers up with runners on first and second. Freeman draws a walk. Otani gets the second. Betts advanced to third. He had bases loaded and Tosker Hernandez at the plate. First pitch, he grounds into a double play. But Betts is able to score. That puts the Dodgers on top one to nothing. And then Kike, he follows that up with a runner on third, and he strikes out swinging. So the Dodgers should have absolutely blown this thing wide open. They should have gone to to Patrick Corbin early on and just gone up for the knockout punch. But unfortunately, got one run on two hits. And then later in the second inning, you have... Chris Taylor, he strikes out to start the inning. Pajes, we talked about at length today. He singles to right. Let's take a look at it one more time because it's a, it's a it's a debut, man. It's a debut. Pajes, he singles to right. Then Miguel Rojas, who's looked really, really decent, really respectable, really professional at the plate. He draws a walk. Pajes advances to second. That sets Barnes up with runners on first to second. And he singles to center. That scores Pajes. By the way, Pajes scoring, standing up. Love the speed. Love the athleticism. And then that brings up Mookie Betts. And you got runners on first and sec on second and third. Betts first pitch slider leaves it up. Mookie crushes it, goes for a double to left. That scores Rojas, and that makes it three nothing. So you're generating runs. Otani he comes up. Runners on second and third. Unfortunately, he grounds out in that situation. Like I said, it was hot off the bat but didn't get the result, then Freeman fly to center. So Dodgers get two runs on three hits. They're up 3 nothing after two. And then top of the third, Yarbrough in. And Young, he reached on that infield single. Abrams popped a third. And then Winker, he falls behind Winker, 3-0 in the count. Then they load it down the sixth pitch. He kind of hangs a curveball. And Winker, he just crushed it, 429 feet. That goes for a two-run shot. That makes it 3-2. So they put a two-spot up there in that inning, two runs on two hits. And you're like, okay, they're not going to lose the Nationals again, right? Not the Nationals. Again, we got Enzo Pies will be sent down once Jason Hayward comes back. Look, that's most likely going to be the case. But we'll see if Jason Hayward can 
replicate the year he had last season. I have my doubts. We got uh, Justin Lamas. I'll take that. Soto hit 35 home runs with a 950 OPS. Exactly. Exactly. I mean, that's the kind of production that you're hoping to get, right? That is how you win big in this league. So, yeah. And just getting back to kind of what we talked about earlier is, look, Yarbrough, I mean, this guy's solid, man. I mean, give me from a guy who's basically your unofficial sixth starter who's eating these innings in these bullpen games. I mean, going five innings and giving up two runs, you'll take that all day, every day. So kudos to Ryan Yarbrough. I think he did a really nice job. Gave the home run to Winker, but outside of that, he was really solid. Then jumped to the fifth inning. Freeman strikes out swinging. Freddie Freeman, he's in a slump. One of the worst slumps that he's been in with the Dodgers. Did have an over-20 slump back in 2021 but freddie typically just being on the field today freddie typically isn't out there doing the batting practice routine in front of the fans that late in the in the day and he's out there he's taking extended batting practice so he's clearly trying to get more swings in trying to see more pitches trying to just find that mechanic and get that to click right when you make those mechanical adjustments for freddie freeman it's just about sticking to the routine that's what freddie freeman believes in i'm going to do the exact same thing when i'm going when i'm 10 for my last 15 right i'm going to do the same thing when i'm 10 for my last 30 right as long as you stick to the same routine and make little tweaks here and there that's how you sustain that's how he's been this good for this long and he's sticking to his routine but i think it's just a timing a feel and a rhythm thing for freddie freeman so i'm not concerned but bottom of the fifth inning that's when kike hernandez he crushed the solo shot that made it 4-2 dodgers and then jump all the way to the seventh inning Where's the run production come from? Mookie Betts. He starts the inning off with a double to center. Really great piece of hitting. A cutter that caught too much of the plate. He gets the barrel on it. He hits a rocket shot to center. That set the Dodgers up with a runner on second. No outs. Shohei, he ends up flying to center. So another missed opportunity with the runners in scoring position. We'll have to pay close attention to that. They intentionally walk Freddie Freeman. And then Law comes in. And Teoscar Hernandez, another great at bat. I mean, he's seeing Teoscar is seeing a lot of pitches. He is grinding out at bats, not going up there just free swinging. I mean, this is a guy that is absolutely exceed expectations. He was supposed to rake. He's exceed those expectations with this team. And seventh pitch of that at bat, you got runners on the corners. And Teoscar Hernandez, he reached on an infield single to third. Bet scores on the play. That makes it five two Dodgers. And then you jump to the bottom of the eighth. Pajes strikes out swinging. Miguel Rojas, really nice job. Gets a one-out double. And then a couple batters later, Mookie Betts at the plate. Runner on second. He singled to right, scoring Rojas to make it 6-2. to two. So, I mean, the offense from Mookie Betts, what he's able to generate. I mean, just look at that piece of hitting right there. I mean, he's just so locked in. Patrick Corbin was no match for Mookie Betts. Just... When Mookie is locked in, you see everything in sync. And you're seeing the hips. You're seeing the bat pad, the barrel. I mean, this is a Hall of Fame talent that is really having another peak. And you just never know when Mookie's going to peak. But I thought maybe he peaked in 2018 when he won the MVP. I thought maybe he peaked last year when he hit a career-high 39 home runs. But just look at the night for Mookie Betts. Five for five, a double Two doubles, two RBIs, two runs, and the third time of his career, he has five hits. He singled in the first, scored the Dodgers' first run of the game. That made it one nothing. Good guys. He doubled in a run in the second inning. He singled again the fourth. He cranked another double, and then he scored in the eighth inning, had RBI single in the ninth. I mean, this is someone who's putting up video game numbers right now. Mookie is living his best life, and the Dodgers absolutely need it. He scored 22 runs. On the year, that leads all of Major League Baseball. He's slashing 388, 490, 700. So he's absolutely my Dodgers dog of the game. He is absolutely my player of the game. And Mookie Betts is out here just proving that he is still an elite talent. Now, another big takeaway is the bottom of the lineup. This is exactly what you want from the bottom of the lineup. You're not asking for slug every single at-bat. You're not asking for elite hitters. That's why you're at the bottom of the lineup. If you were an elite hitter that was hitting doubles and home runs every at-bat, you wouldn't be batting 7th, 8th, or ninth. No. 
What we need is guys to get on base. And Pajes, I think, gave them some life. I think Pajes gave the bottom of the lineup some much-needed juice, a big-time shot in the arm. He goes one for four. Miguel Rojas, he goes two for three. He started at third base. He slid over to shortstop. Later in the game, he goes two for three with a double. He ends up with a two for three and a double and a walk. And he also scored two runs, right? Austin Barnes, one for four. Austin Barnes hitting 308 on the season. So that's exactly what you want from the bottom of the lineup. Guys can go up there and just get, you know, be gritty, right? Just kind of just gut out at bats, just grind out at bats, and just find a way to get on base so Mookie, you know, Tani, and Freddie, and Teoscar can do damage. So give them a ton of credit. That My big takeaway is, hey, maybe Pajes was the life and it was just one hit right it was a single but still i think that re-energized the entire bottom of the lineup and i'm very very excited to see more of andy pies to see if he can build off of that now chris taylor look all i have to say is when the phillies gave trey turner that standing ovation i said this in the past as a joke i'm actually saying this kind of being serious. I mean, maybe you go out there and you give him that ovation. Maybe you show him that love, that support, so he kind of stops pressing the way he is. Maybe that changes things. I mean, Chris Taylor, he struck out. He grounded out on Tuesday. His hitless streak now is at 30 at-bats. 30 at-bats. He did take a walk in the fifth inning, but then what happened? He was picked off trying to steal second base. So just, man, it's gone from bad to worse so we're literally talking about the Dodgers potentially flirting with the idea of DFAing him. I mean, obviously, I don't think that will be the case. I think most likely they are going to try to find a phantom IL situation. But, yeah, it is a tough watch, man. It is such, such a top watch. Such a tough watch to see that. And then, yeah, I mean, I think for this team just in general – Shohei Otani, people are freaking out just because of the fact that he is not coming through a runners in scoring position because he's now one for 19, he's hitting 53 with runners in scoring position. He did have a single in the first inning, he did have a single in the ninth inning, but he goes 0 for 3 in the three at bats in between those singles and all those at bats. You had ducks on the pond, you had runners in scoring position, so that's three at bats. And it wasn't able to come through. So I think it's a little bit overblown just because, like I said, the ground out there in the first inning, the ground out there in the second inning had a 107.7 exit velocity, had a 360 expected batting average. So if you look at the peripherals, if you look at the expected numbers, he has a, he's, Actually, the expected numbers say he should be hitting 286 with a 318 on base and a 488 slug with runners on scoring position. So all this is to say, do not lose sleep. Do not worry at all about Shohei Otani with runners in scoring position. The man is going to be just fine because he's scorching the baseball. He's just running into some bad luck. And I think that you might see him bring his B and C swing possibly just a, just a little bit, especially when there's two outs and in certain situations to just make sure that he's really kind of passing the baton and just generating runs. So look, I mean, bottom of the lineup though, I mean, heading into today, they're hitting 162. You get Rojas, like I said, he goes out there, he performs, he hit the ball hard and he slugs. So, I mean, today the Dodgers seven, eight, nine hitters, they reach base five times and they cross home plate three times and had an RBI. So that's where the big takeaways. Mookie went off again. Mookie's ridiculous. He's someone who's running away with the MVP in the National League. Pajes looked comfortable. He looked like someone that belongs in the show. And I definitely want to see more of Andy Pajes. So there's that. And then, look, the bottom of the line, they showed up. So you got to feel good about that. So now let's do all your comments for the rest of the show. Let's see if there's anything interesting from Dave Roberts and the gang after this one. I'm pretty sure it was all about Andy Pajes. Let's see. He was asked, Dave was asked about Otani with runners in scoring position. And Dave said, we have to temper that back. We'll address that as far as Otani's aggressiveness. 
And he said that he's a little more aggressive than usual. It's from Fabian Ardaya. Interesting. And then Fabian also tweet out, Dave Roberts confirmed Landon Nack starts and makes his MLB debut tomorrow. So that's no surprise. We've known that for a couple of days now. So that's going to be exciting. Another debut. That was great. Fabian also tweeted, Andy Pod said he wasn't nervous ahead of his big league debut. He was always going to swing at his first pitch in the big leagues. He said that. And now he will give the ball, which was already in a case in his locker to his wife, Alondra. Oh, that's so sweet. He's going to give the ball to his wife, Alondra. So you got to love that. And like I said, I just always, I get, you know, I just get really excited. I, I, just seeing these guys during spring training. I mean, a lifelong dream was realized today and he made the most of it. I mean, no one can take that away from him. He could never play another game, major league baseball. And he can always go up there and say, you know what? I had a single on uh, my first at bat, the first pitch that I saw. So that's awesome. Here we go. Dodgers Nation has more breakdowns than the Indiana Jones ride at Disneyland. <laughs> that's a fire take. Fire that's take. a fire take. <laughs> I like that one. Um, yeah, I mean, we definitely, hey, man, this is a, we don't take any days off, man. This is a uh, 24-7 operation. This is a, a 24-7 operation here at Dodgers Nation. So here we go. Let's go. We got uh, $15 million a year for Whiffy Taylor. Ouch. We got uh, Mr. Copacetic. Have to stomach bad baseball from CT all year for the glimmer of a boat. big postseason hit. Yeah, you hit that one on the nail, Mr. Copacetic. Is, I mean, as great as some of these players are in the regular season that don't perform in the postseason, I mean, sometimes you say, you know what? You live with the bad. You live with the struggles just because there is this thing that you can't explain that happens to this certain type of player that for whatever reason, when the lights get bright and the pressure's on, they find a way to execute and perform on the highest level on the biggest stage. And Chris Taylor, he has a long track record of being able to do that. So is that enough, though, to allow him to essentially – kind of embarrass himself out there if let's say this over 30 goes to over 40 and it goes for over 50 and over 60 and it really starts to pile up at some point you're hurting the player because uh, he it's just there's something wrong at that point there's something wrong i mean typically players when they struggle when they fall off it's because of two things it's injuries and it's age and look there's like bacon, beer, the 72 Dolphins. Those are the only things in father of time. Those are the four things that are undefeated in life, right? And I think he's lost some quick twitch. I really do. I think he's lost some of that, that violence in his swing that you see. If you don't have all the muscle fibers firing on all cylinders and you're just losing a little quick twitch... Big league pitching is extremely difficult to hit, so I agree with that. CT3 used to choke up on the bat. That's a Mark Monzon. He did choke up at certain times, and you are seeing the feet, I think, before the pitch. There's a little bit of happy feet there that we've seen in the past, but I think that it is a little more pronounced right now. And I just think he's just selling out on certain pitches. I mean, that's it's a very difficult when when pitchers know your your struggle areas right and your cold zones and they're gonna try to exploit those it's almost like he's swinging as hard as he can and hoping something good happens you can't do that in major league baseball i mean you got to get bat to ball right you got to cover the entire plate you have to go swinging inside the baseball i mean i think for him it's kind of getting back to basics and trying to just maybe reinvent himself a little bit. He did it in the past. Maybe he could try that again. But I do think there needs to be a little bit of a reinvention versus, you know what, we're going to do what worked back in 2017, 18, 19, and just hope that we could just do that again. When you don't have a natural swing, it's very difficult to do that at this level. It's damn near impossible. Super chat over here from K Casino. Let's say the casino. Uh, Doug, do we give up on Bush too soon? I don't know about you guys, but how long are we going to give Max Muncy a pass? His defense is subpar, and he's just not the clutch bat that he once was. K Casino. So let's unpack this a little bit. Yes, Michael Bush is hotter than the devil's armpit right now. Michael Bush is out there performing like an all-star. He probably could make the all-star team if he plays at this pace for the next couple of months. Let's not forget, though, Max Muncy, we just talked about postseason proven players. 
Max Muncy certainly has had a ton of success in the postseason. Here's the thing about Max Muncy. I mean, he's having a good year. He's having a decent season. He's an above-average offensive player. Max Muncy. Uh, Max Muncy is hitting 262. Ignore that. He has a 130 weighted runs created plus. So offensively, Max Muncy is 30% above league average. 30% above league average. And uh, what more could you ask for for him? I mean, the defense has actually gotten better. I mean, when's the last time Muncy made an error that hurt the Dodgers, right? It's been a while, right? I mean, if you look at if you look at uh, his competition at that position, I mean, if you look at so Ryan McMahon of the Colorado Rockies. So for all third basemen in all of Major League Baseball. All third baseman, all of Major League Baseball, with a minimum of 70 plate appearances. Ryan McMahon has a 147 weighted runs created plus. So weighted runs created plus, it's a scale of you know 100 is average, right? It's park adjusted. It's based on weighted on base average. It's a great statistic to evaluate overall offensive production, right? 100 is league average, right? Max Muncy is at 120, 130. That's second in all of Major League Baseball behind Ryan McMahon. His weighted runs created plus is actually higher than Austin Riley. It's higher than Cabrian Hayes. It's higher than Nolan Arenado. It's higher than Matt Chapman's, right? And look at Chapman has a... Nolan Arenado's been in a below average offensive player. Matt Chapman has been damn near awful. Matt Chapman is in bust mode with the Giants so far. When you look at the contract they gave him. Also, Max Muncy has four home runs. That's twice. That's one more than Matt Chapman. That leads the league for third basemen that have a minimum of 70 plate appearances. So, look, I mean, I think we need to put a little more respect on Max Muncy's name. But, I mean, you got uh, Paredes from Tampa Bay. He has five with less plate appearances, and he's been really, really good this season. But it's been a slow start for Jose Ramirez. It's been a slow start for... Rafael Devers hasn't gone off to the best stars around league average. So when you break it down, when you get inside the numbers, Max Muncy has been pretty decent. As far as Michael Bush, they just weren't going to place him anywhere where they could have possibly used him. They don't, they didn't think internally, I can tell you this from talking to people. They didn't think that he had the range to play second base. And also Mookie Betts was going to play that position third base. I think he could have gotten it done, but they trust Max Muncy, and they got him back on a team-friendly deal. The outfield spots, you brought in Teoscar Hernandez, you have Pajes, right? You have certain guys, Miguel Vargas, who they were higher on. But, yeah, look, if he goes on to be that eight-time All-Star, uh, yeah, <laughs> if he goes on to an MVP and hit 30 home runs for the next six or seven years, yeah, maybe it was the wrong decision. Maybe you could have lived with him at third base. But Max Muncy, since he put on that Dodgers uniform, no one has hit more home runs than Max Muncy. I mean, he's been their most prolific home run hitter. But let's cut more comments here. We'll let you guys enjoy the rest of your Tuesday night. Uh, DMAC, you need a pledge to stop drinking until CT3 gets a hit. That's from Myria Jones. Yeah, we'll do something. What are we going to do? Well, yeah, this, yeah, maybe I'll, uh, I'll cut back on the, the Models and Pacificos for sure. Uh, my wife told me I'm spending more time with you than I am with her. I told her to talk about the Dodgers and Mitchell Hopkins. <laughs> You're killing me. It's a fire take. Uh, Mookie, five for five MVP. Cowboys, five rings. So many shows, so little time. What up, David Sabatini? Rock with us from New York. DMAC, what up, Low Blue, over on YouTube? So, yeah, I mean, exactly. I mean, we got XJ Alexander says Muncy is hitting the hitting fine. His defense is doing okay as well. Don't know what that dude is smoking who's hating on Max Muncy. Look, I think he gets a bad rap. And honestly, like I said, everyone's opinion is welcome here, guys. This is a safe environment to talk Dodger baseball. We don't always have to agree. I just care that you watch and listen, okay? That's the only thing I care about. But uh, it's great when you do, we do agree, though. But, uh, yeah, we got Jake Kidd. Max Muncy leads the league in striking out the runners in scoring position. I lost count at 30 runners. He's been boom or bust, okay? That's the real rub on Max Muncy. He's striking out way too much, okay? This is uncharacteristic. Max Muncy is striking out a 35.1% clip for his career, that number's at 24.8%. So he's got to get back to the player that he was, not expanding the zone. Sometimes he does look a little overmatched on certain fastballs and certain counts, but for the most part, if you look at everything in its totality, 
the production has been there. But yeah, absolutely agree, J Kid. The runner in scoring position hitting around 200 definitely needs to increase that mark. But he's also hit some pretty big time home runs too. I mean, just the other night, I mean, he hits a big time home run. So you definitely need that. But Muncy's defense has been decent as of late. Yeah, the best thing about Max Muncy's defense is when we don't even mention it. We don't say he made a great play. We don't say he went out there as a gold glover. The best thing about Max Muncy's defense is when we just don't talk about it at all. It's like when you don't talk about your kicker, when you don't talk about your offensive line in football, that's a good thing. That just means they're getting their job done. That's what we need to see with Max Muncy. Cowboys five rings, 1999. I'm going to use that for some carne asada fries. I'm going to pay off Ipe's debt. Uh, D-Mac, the real MVP. Appreciate you for that. Samuel Ito, D-Mac, do you think we should use Otani in the outfield? Trade deadline, get another bat. Outfield needs help. Look, I'll tell you this. I mean, I was – I was uh, – I was uh, – earlier today – I was on the field and Shohei was throwing and Shohei was just go going through his, his routine. Let me see if I can put it up here a little bit. He was going through that routine and there we go. And you I me mean, just look at him right here. I mean he looks confident. He's he's going through his routine and going through the rehab process and Look, what I've heard about Shohei Otani is he loves to pitch, but he lives to hit. And, hey, who knows? Who knows? I mean, they're not going to say it, but World Series, Otani, final out, just like we saw in the WBC. Who knows? Crazier things have happened. But that's going to do it for this episode of the Dodgers Nation Post Game Show. My name is Doug McCain. You can follow me on X and Instagram at DMAC underscore LA. Ricky Vasquez, DMAC Pajes for president. That's a fire take. A couple more walk off shots here. David Hurd, when are we going to get Walker back? We need a start starter back with Bobby gone. Yeah, I mean, Walker's on the fast track. I mean, we could see him by the end of this month. Roy Estrada, how is Knack's control? Hey, he's got a knack for great control. I mean, this is a guy who's a four-pitch pitcher, very polished. Is he going to break our walk record, a go-after glass now strikeout record? I would say he's going to be right in the middle. He's someone that profiles as a back-end starter. Don't expect a future ace. That's not what he is. At best, maybe he's a number three a mid-tier starter, which, guess what, is something that's very – you should be proud to accomplish, right? But he's projecting more of a back-end style. Um, he's been compared to kind of the Lucas Giolito. That's what the Casey Porter, my friend, likes to say about him. Uh, your CT3 is a 3-0 count, and you swing Ray Soto. Yeah, I mean, they're just they're, – they're doing every – they're basically telling Chris Taylor, look, you've been here for a while. We consider you a core guy. If you want to swing 3-0 because you think that you're going to connect on something that's going to really let something click, they're going to do that. And that's really kind of what they're about is, is just kind of giving some of their veterans, some of their core players the leash and the runway to go out there and see what they can do. And fortunately, it just hasn't happened. But that's going to do it, guys. My name is Doug McCann. Like I said, follow me on, on Twitter and Instagram at DMAC underscore LA. Subscribe to the channel. Hit that subscribe button. Hit that notification bell. Hit that like button. Remember, nothing brings us together quite like Dodger baseball. And until next time, 